So what we have to do here is we have to check against the given options. Okay, so you can see here that I magnify this. You can see that the parallel component of vector e. If I draw this over here, the parallel component of vector e will be along this line somewhere. So we can see that the parallel component of E is E cos theta into some unit vector B cap. Now this unit vector we can see lies in the first quadrant. It's in first quadrant. Whereas if you look at the perpendicular component, now you can be sure that the perpendicular component is like this. So it is having a negative X component and a positive Y component. So the perpendicular component of E, which will be this one, from the diagram you can see that the perpendicular component will have a unit vector, which is going to be, which we had named M cap. Now this we can see will have a negative X component and a positive Y component. That we can see from the diagram itself. So that way we can now just check the options. Okay. So now we go through the options. Option E was saying that. So let's get back to the question. So option E was saying. Just a second. So option A was saying that the parallel component should be given by E cos theta into I cap plus J cap by root 2. So obviously this part is correct. Now this we should check. This should be B cap. Okay. So the vector B was I cap plus J cap. So you can see that B cap is i cap plus j cap by root 2. So we see that yes, that becomes the correct option. So we know that option A is correct now. Okay. From the diagram and from just analyzing this. Okay. Diagram not so important for option A, but when it comes to the perpendicular component Y, you will see that it is important. Okay. Now option B, it is saying that the perpendicular component should be E sine theta into i cap minus j cap by root. Immediately you can see that from the diagram this is wrong. This is correct but this is not correct. Why? Because from the diagram the perpendicular component of it should have a negative X component, Y component. So that's how I can rule out that this option is wrong. Okay, without actually doing all that calculation I've done earlier, we can rule this out and we can just say it on the basis of this. Now, a component, you can see its direction is such that it has a negative X component and a positive Y component. So the projection of A perpendicular to B, it cannot be this because this has a positive X projection and a negative Y projection. So this one is lying somewhere like this in the fourth quadrant. But it should be lying where in the second quadrant. So that becomes ruled out. Now similarly, option C becomes wrong because already option A has been ruled correct. So again, it's saying that parallel component is E cos theta into I cap minus J cap by root 2. So this is wrong because this is correct, but this option is wrong because this is not B cap. Okay, and it should be B cap. So obviously we've got this sorted out. A is this particular option C is not correct. Now coming to the option D, you can see that it's saying perpendicular component is E sine theta into minus I cap plus J cap. Is written J minus I? That's the same thing as this. Okay. So let's check this. Okay. So first of all, we can see that this thing is correct. This magnitude is this. Now this M cap. 
you have to check two things you have to check that it should be perpendicular to the vector b itself okay so the dot product of this one so the dot product of this one okay and of course it should have negative x component and positive y component so that you can already see this point is correct okay now this we need to check so let's check this so m cap dot b kitna hona chahiye zero hona chahiye so m cap dot b yahan pe kitna hai minus i cap plus j cap by root 2 dot product with b remember was i cap plus j cap so you can see easily that yes this is zero so that means that's also right so now i know that this is also the correct m cap okay so that means this becomes the correct option so your answer is become E and D. they become your correct answers. Okay, so this is the way of verifying, you know, geometrically, which of the options B and D is correct. Okay, so we are checking out of option B and D. You can see both have correct magnitude. Okay, and both. R. I'm not audible, is it? But the audio is uh, going fine from my end. People, so might be uh, internet issue at your end. For I'm just check once again. So it may. Uh, so anyway, both have. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks for uh, verifying. So for I'm just uh, check your internet connection. Otherwise, uh, don't worry. Uh, you will get the uh, video recording with the audio. both have correct magnitude and both are perpendicular to b that also if you check you know but b is the wrong option and d is the right option why because e perpendicular should have a negative x component and a positive y component so this becomes a very critical point in this question to miss out this point you might you know just in a hurry you might mark the wrong option so that should not be done okay. so we will hope this point is clear okay. however to be on the safer side the first method we are done by solving the entire thing as a vector and then calculating the unit vector and then writing it as a sin theta into the correct unit vector that is the more appropriate method because that will work even in the case of 3d vectors अगर ये थ्री डायमेंशनल होते तो हम ऐसा डायग्राम भी नहीं ड्रॉ कर सकते थे बिकॉज दे आर नॉट लाइन इन एक्स वाई प्लेन सो इन दैट कैंड ऑफ केस वी हैव टू रिलाई ऑन दिस मेथड दैट यू डिस्कस कर लिया वेयर वी कैलकुलेटेड द न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यू एंड ऑल दैट एंड ओके सो पीपल होप दिस क्वेश्चन इज क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू इट्स अ ट्रिकी क्वेश्चन इन दैट सेंस ओके नो डाउट अबाउट दैट ओके नाउ लेट्स कम टू ओके फरहान यू कैन ट्राई एंड इंक्रीज योर वॉल्यूम और डू वन थिंग लॉग आउट वंस एंड लॉग बैक इन Uh, I have disabled the waiting room, so if you log out, you'll be able to log back in. Yeah, I'm coming to question two, Manas and others. Okay. So I have received uh, quite a few students have asked me to solve question number two, so I'm moving on to that now. Okay. So I hope both the methods were clear in this question, question one. Now moving on to question two of exercise two. Okay. Just give me a second. Yeah, very similar type of question, but this may be that then we will have to now here there is no application of projection. It's just a more general question. So we have to use the parallel and perpendicular condition actually. Okay, so it's given to us that vector E is two i cap plus j cap plus k cap, and vector B is given to us as i cap plus j cap plus k cap as a given okay. 
uh, Farhan, beta, I'm requesting you if you can just uh, re-log in. Okay. So just uh, exit the Zoom app once and log in again. I think your problem will be solved. Okay. Or your internet connection, yeah. Okay, now option A is saying that we are looking for a unit vector perpendicular to E. So, unit vector perpendicular to E is this one. Minus J cap plus K cap by root. Now, first of all, I want you to understand one thing here. Ki, if I say that, you know, there's this unit vector perpendicular to A and it's so much. Is it a unique? Okay, good to know, Farhan. So, welcome back. So, now listen to my question carefully, everyone. If I say that A ke perpendicular ek unit vector, hai, jo ki A, this, this unit vector N cap is perpendicular to A. Is, is N cap a unique vector? Or can we find more values of N cap? So, I say find a unit vector which is perpendicular to E. Is it going to be just one possible unit vector or are there going to be more than one possible unit vector? Is it a unique condition or are there more than one? Uh, not unique. And Amok beta, it, it would have been two if it's two dimensional, but here it's three dimensional. So what you have to understand is very interesting point here. The other ASA vector here, look at three dimensional. And we are talking, yeah, correct, it's infinite. So now just imagine a plane which is being cut by A perpendicularly. So just imagine a, a side two dimensional plane like this, which A is cutting perpendicularly. So in this two, two dimensional plane, there will be infinite number of such unit vectors which are perpendicular. So there are infinite such unit vectors okay. perpendicular to E. So, but how do we check? So they have all, they have common condition, but they all have dot product equal to zero with E. Okay. So basically N cap dot E should be equal to zero for them to be perpendicular. So given this option now, I have to check two things. One is I have to check whether dot product is zero or not. And even before that, I have to check the unit vector. Maybe the option is not giving you a unit vector, but it's saying it's a unit vector. Then that option would be wrong. So first thing you need to do here is check if the vector given is a unit vector. So the vector given was this one minus j plus k by root 2 and you can see that yes it's a unit vector because minus j plus k by root 2 ka magnitude it will be 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 square root which is 1 okay, so it's, it's a unit vector but for example if I had given minus j plus k by root 3 you can see this is not a unit vector so this magnitude is not that much. This magnitude is square root of 1 by 3 or square root of 2 by 3 whatever. So, so that's the same. And second thing is you need to check perpendicular condition. So that is n cap dot a should be 0. So that is happening because here minus j plus k by root 2 dot product with e which was 2i plus j plus k. You can see this product is 0 plus, sorry, minus 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2. So that is 0. So both the conditions are satisfied. So that means option A is correct. Okay, so option A is correct. So people, you will understand this type of question is more tedious. You know, because my question is solved, I cannot check the option. I have to do the other way. I have to check the option. And because it's more than one correct, so that means each of the options I have to check separately. I cannot look at the vectors A and B and say that, okay, this vector is that much, that vector is that much and select the correct option. I have to actually check each and every option 
for whether the option is correct or not. Okay. Now, similarly, what is option B saying here? Option B is saying that this uh, a unit vector parallel to this. So it's saying n cap equal to 2i plus j plus k by root 6 is parallel to k. Now this I can do a little bit more directly because I can see that the unit vector parallel to any given vector e is nothing but a cap. It is vector e divided by e. So I should just check this thing with the given value. Okay. So that thing is very simple. It is 2i plus j plus k divided by square root of 2 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. So it is a given vector. You can see n cap is nothing but the given, I mean e cap is nothing but the given n cap. So that means a cap is the correct one. So this is 2i cap plus j cap plus k cap divided by root 6, which is nothing but the value n cap which is given. So that means this is the correct option also. So A is also correct option, B is also correct option. Okay guys, hope this is clear. Now similarly, we have to check option C. Okay. Now you can try option C yourself. That's just the way I've checked for the condition that given vector is a unit vector perpendicular to A or not. Like that you check the condition with B also. Again, you understand that there is no unique such unit vector. There are infinite unit vectors which are perpendicular to B. So the one which is given to you in the option, you have to just check whether it satisfies the dot product condition. Okay, are you people clear? So check option C by the same method. Okay, so anybody got it? Option C may, it is saying n cap given to us as again it is minus j plus k by root 2. Is perpendicular to B and B is what it is i plus j plus k. So the answer is yes, it is. So firstly you can see that yes, it's a unit vector. That thing is satisfied. Okay. And secondly, yes, n cap dot b is zero. So it's perpendicular to vector. So that's also correct. Okay. So that means C option is also correct. And finally, D option kya keh hai? that unit vector parallel to B is this one. That one is wrong, I think. Yes. Oh sorry, parallel to E. So n cap is equal to i plus j plus k by root 3 is parallel to e which is nothing but 2i cap plus j cap plus k. You can see that this option is becoming wrong because parallel unit vector parallel to a kya hoga? It will be a cap and we had already seen a cap was 2i plus j plus k divided by root 6. So this a cap is actually it is a unique relation. It's a unique unit vector. Or koi unit vector is any which has that property of being parallel to it. Perpendicular unit vectors infinite ho sakte, but parallel ek hi ho sakte. So that is that is how we have to understand this. Okay, so that is an important point over here. Okay, so given a vector, let's say e there are infinite unit vectors perpendicular to it. n cap dot e is equal to zero. Okay. But a unique unit vector and that one is e cap. Okay. Since we are on the subject, another thing we should understand is similarly, given two vectors a and b, okay, 
there is a unique unit vector perpendicular to e and coplanar to e and b so let's understand what this thing is okay. this unit vector will be nothing but m cap which is b perpendicular unit vector so it is b minus b parallel divided by its own magnitude where b parallel is nothing but b cos theta e cap or that is nothing but e dot b divided by e into e divided by e like this okay so this is not a dot product just like that just a moment not confuse this dot here with the dot products so i just write it in a bracket separately like this, okay so as a unique unit vector hai jo ki ea condition satisfy kar raha hai and that unit vector i'll just show you in the diagram also if let us say this is a vector e and this is a vector b so you can see the white board or the screen is the plane of a and b so there is only one unit vector which is okay oh actually there is one direction actually there is proper way to say it is that there is two possible unit vectors plus minus m cap okay. so so two possible unit vectors in say plus minus m cap where m cap so i'm saying the given two vectors a and b which are non collinear i'm looking for a unit vector which is coplanar to a and b but perpendicular to b okay so unit vector perpendicular to e okay and coplanar to this okay so in my so now you should see here that this moment to make this convenient i'll just interchange a and b but actually it can work for that pair also just that it difficult for me to draw so ye vector agar a hai aur ye vector agar b hai then what i am doing i am looking for a unit vector which is perpendicular to e but in this plane so that means that is along somewhere along this so i am looking for a unit vector which is along this line okay this is the line which is perpendicular to e but in the plane of e okay kitan we have started new chapter will be next time okay new chapter will be next time so we have to complete the doubts of this so this is m cap and this is minus of m cap so you can see that plus m cap and minus of m cap are only possible unit vectors that are perpendicular to e and coplanar that means in the plane So that's another thing that you should know about this type of unit vectors. Okay, so hope this point is clear to you. And another point you should know is when we talk about unit vector, 
perpendicular to the plane of a and b okay so now next thing is given vectors a and b a unit vector perpendicular to the plane of a and b that means perpendicular to both a and b okay so now i'm talking about this situation that if suppose a and b lie in this plane so vector a is Here and vector B is here in this two-dimensional plane. Now this one will be the line which is perpendicular to the plane of A and B. Okay. This is perpendicular to the plane of vector A. And B. So now I want to find a unit vector line like that. So you see that there are two possible unit vectors. Okay, one is this one. Let's say n cap, and one is this one minus n cap. So that n cap will be what? It will be a cross b divided by mod of a cross b. Okay. So there are two possible such unit vectors plus minus n cap. So, given two non-collinear vectors a and b, you might be asked to find two types of unit vectors. One which is perpendicular to one of the two, but lying in the plane of the two of them, or coplanar to them. So, for that, you will have to use the perpendicular projection. Whereas the other one you might be asked to find is the one perpendicular to both the given vectors a and b, and that is for that you have to use the cross products unit vector. Okay. So, hope this point is clear to all of you. Okay, so after second question, what we are doing next? Anything else in exercise two, people? Question number three, okay. Let's come to that next. So question three, exercise two. So saying v1 plus v2 is perpendicular to v1 minus v2, then what we can say about the two? So this is a type of question we have done before also. We'll just use the dot product. This is perpendicular to. Okay, I'm coming to it. Okay, v1 minus v2. Yeah, guys, I'm coming to this. Okay, so perpendicular means v1 plus v2. Ka dot product. With v1 minus v2, how much will it be? Zero will be right, Amu. So now open this bracket. So this will become v1 square okay. minus v1 dot v2 plus v2 dot v1 minus v2 square should be zero. Okay. Now this term and this term will cancel. Okay, because v1 dot v2 is equal to minus v2. Okay, I'll explain sneaky by the same. Okay, so v1 square minus v2 square is zero. That means v1 is equal to v2. It can't be minus because they are magnitudes. So magnitude of v1 is equal to magnitude of v2. Because v1 and v2 are magnitudes, so they can't be the negative v2. Yes, Nikita, what I mean by saying that there are two unit vectors, you see, if you have two vectors given to us A and B. And they are lying in the plane of the board, like this vector A here and this vector B here. So, what about the unit vector coming out of the plane? That's also perpendicular. And what about the vector going into the plane? That's also perpendicular. No? Okay. So here, coming out will be which one? It will be A cross B. And therefore, going in will be which one? It will be minus of A cross B or B cross A. Okay. So A cross B is a vector which is perpendicular to both A and B. B cross A or minus of A cross B also has that property that it is perpendicular to both of them. So unka unit vector will become that unit vector which I am looking for. Is it clear, Snikita? 
how we got two unit vectors over there which are perpendicular to both a and b oh so if if b cross b is unit vector is n gap then both plus n gap and minus n gap right? because this one will be plus n gap and this one will be minus n gap if both of them are having that property that they are perpendicular to both a and b but only those two unit vector there is no other unit vector which has that property that is perpendicular to the plane of any now amu hope this question is clear okay. now moving on to question number 5 of exercise 2 uh, ask me then i will come to exercise 4 question number 6 huh? second part amu okay just a second question number 2 sorry question number 3 second part mod b1 is equal to mod b2 yeah that is correct option b is also given the angle between ha huh, so it can have any value na no? so there is no koi restriction nahi hai between b1 and b2's angle Okay, why option D is correct? Because see, what is happening is now that when we are solving this condition, okay, now we are seeing that any two vectors v1 and v2 of equal magnitude, okay, have this property. Which property? That v1 plus v2. Is perpendicular to v1 minus v2. So angle matter नहीं करता है ना? The angle between them could be 30, it could be 90, it could be 60, it could be 120, it could be anything. Okay. Or if you look at the solution geometrically, you will realize ये condition होता है. Rhombus होना चाहिए. Okay. So you can see that if yeah, वैसे भी I am coming to exercise four. If magnitude of a is equal to magnitude of b then the shape that you get is a rhombus okay. now irrespective of this angle theta the rhombus always has that property of hope that the diagonals are perpendicular so a plus b is perpendicular to a minus b or v1 plus v2 is perpendicular to v1 minus v2 as long as the parallelogram formed by them is a rhombus this will happen. Okay. So this property that you know, diagonals are perpendicular for a rhombus. This is of any theta, any angle theta. That theta could be acute, obtuse, whatever. Okay. So that's it. Right. Is it clear, Amu? Oh, okay. Good. So that is why that option was correct. Okay. Uh, anything left in exercise uh, two? Question number five, Satya. Okay. Uh, question five, I'll just explain to you very easily. It's very simple. Okay. Before we come to, so question five of exercise two. Now see, when we have an option like this, u dot v cross w. You can see what is this quantity? It's a vector quantity. Okay. And what is this quantity? It's a vector quantity. And we are taking dot product between them. So vector vector ka dot product. Yes, it makes sense. Okay. But suppose we had a quantity like this, we had u cross v dot w. Abhi kya hai? Dekho, ye quantity kya? It's a scalar quantity. Whereas this is what? This is a vector quantity. And we have put the cross product in between. So this now does not make sense. Okay. Because we cannot define cross product of a vector in a scalar. ठीक है हरप्रिया इज दिस क्लियर बेटा तो ऐसे ही आपको सारे ऑप्शंस होते हैं ओके डॉट और क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट बोथ ऑफ देम अप्लाई ओनली टू टू वेक्टर क्वांटिटीज दे डोंट अप्लाई टू वन वेक्टर एंड वन स्केल ओके सी ऑप्शन सी ऑप्शन में कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं बेटा बिकॉज़ सी ऑप्शन में यू पुट अ ब्रैकेट ना इट इज u डॉट b इनटू w सो दिस इज नाउ अ स्केलर ओके दिस इज अ वेक्टर and we are just multiplying a scalar with a vector. We are not taking dot product. We are saying a scalar times a vector. And that's fine. Like we can say two a. 
That's correct. But we cannot say two dot a. This becomes wrong because two is a scalar and a is a vector. Okay, so that's the fifth question. Yeah, now we're coming to uh, question number. Okay, good, good, that clear. So, Javal, question number seven. Let me explain of exercise two, question number seven quickly. And we, okay. So, seven is saying a situation will be described using different set of coordinate axes having different orientations. Okay, so let's understand this. So, suppose Javal, you have drawn the x, y axis like this. Just you happen to have drawn the x, y axis like this. Okay. Whereas I have drawn for some reason, I have chosen to draw the x, y axis like this. I have taken a different orientation of x, y plane. So in my coordinate frame or in my system, in my reference frame, this is the y axis which I am now labeling as y prime and this is the x axis which I am labeling as x prime. Okay. Now let's say both of us are observing the same vector. And just for argument's sake, let's say that that vector is this one. Okay. So suppose this is a vector of magnitude 20 such that with this original XY system that you have made, it's making an angle of 60 degrees. But what I have done is I have inclined this as 30 degrees. Okay. This is also at 30 degrees. So in Jevel's xy plane, what's happening is he would describe the vector a Jevel as a cos 60 i cap plus a sin 60 j cap. So he would describe it as 10 i cap plus 10 root 3 j cap. Okay. But in my system, I would have a different interpretation. I would interpret the vector E in my system, which is X prime Y prime. The vector E would be described as 10 root 3 I cap plus 10 J. Because theta would be 30 degrees with this spectrum, but the magnitude of the vector E would be 10. Whereas in your system, the magnitude of the vector E would be 20, sorry, and theta would be 60. Here also it would be 20 and 30. So you can see what is happening when I'm using two different systems, AX and EY, the components, they depend on axis orientation. But the magnitude of the vector does not. It's same in both the frames. Okay. And in general what the vector is, that is not changing. The vector E is arrow is actually the same for both of us. It's the way it is inclined to my axis and therefore my AX and AY are different from your AX and AY. So that is what this option, uh, this question means. Okay? And similarly, value of a scalar will not depend on that. Okay. The vector will also not change because the vector arrow has not changed, but the component of the vector will change. The magnitude of the vector will not change because the length of this arrow has not changed. The direction in which it is pointing has not changed. So it's as a vector, it has not changed. But in my writing the vector, the components have changed. Javel, is it clear, Peter? A conceptual question. Okay, good. Uh, all right. So I think that completes exercise uh, two. Anything else from exercise two? Okay, no. Good. Very good. Exercise three. So far, nobody has asked me. Any anybody has a doubt in exercise three? Okay. So let's come to exercise four. So I think I got a request for question number two, right? Of exercise four. Question number six and question number two. Is it? Yeah, Vaishnavi and Sukita and also 
ask me. Okay. So let's come to question number two of exercise four first. Okay, I'll come to seven and eleven also. Okay. So let's start with exercise two, question number sorry four, question number two, three, uh, six, seven, eleven. So these are the questions so far. All right. So. So question two को हम ऐसे भी कर सकते हैं। We can use it. You can use component algebra or we can use this thing, uh, the right-handed system. So it's saying that a force is given by the charge of a particle, which is a scalar quantity, multiplied by the cross product of velocity and something called magnetic field. Okay. Ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. So this is given where. Actually, later in twelfth, we will study this uh, equation in detail. This is called Lorentz force, where B is magnetic field, B is the velocity of a particle, and Q is charge. So Q is a scalar, but Q can be positive or negative. Okay. So what happens is that if Q is a positive quantity, like the charge of a proton, uh, plus one point six into ten raised to the minus nineteen coulomb, that kind of thing. Okay. Then what happens? That force is along B cross B, and if Q is negative, that means you are multiplying a negative scalar with this vector quantity B cross B. So what will happen? The force will not be along; it will be opposite B cross B. So that is what you have to solve. Now, in the first part of this, they are showing you that. D is along the y-axis, this along the y-axis, and the velocity is along the negative x-axis. The velocity is like this perpendicular to it along the negative x-axis. So this is our x-axis. So what will happen here is just use your right-hand palm rule. So you'll see that v cross v का direction क्या होगा यहाँ पे? It will be along the negative z-axis, like this. This will be the direction of V cross B okay. because B is like this along the y-axis and V is like this along the negative x direction. So you can see that if you place your right hand palm like this, then you are looking at the knuckles. This is your thumb. So your palm is into the plane. So, अभी इस केस में क्या होगा फोर्स विल बी अलॉन्ग माइनस के कैप इफ क्यू इज पॉजिटिव एंड द फोर्स विल बी अलॉन्ग प्लस के कैप इफ क्यू इज ठीक है अंडरस्टूड बेटर दिस इज हाउ इट यूज क्वेश्चन और यू कैन ऑल्सो यूज कॉम्पोनेट एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो यूज कॉम्पोनेट सो यू कैन ऑल्सो डू दिस क्वेश्चन यू राइट यू ऑफ वी As minus v i cap because it's along the negative this thing, okay? and you write your v as plus v j cap, and your force is becoming q into v cross v. So you see, it is becoming minus q v b into i cross j. Now i cross j is k, so it is minus q v b j cap. You can see that if q is positive. Okay, then again, it is along k cap, and if it q is negative, so if q is positive, then f is along minus k cap because this quantity in front of it is a negative quantity. Whereas if q itself is becoming negative, then the quantity minus q will be actually becomes a positive quantity. So the force's direction will become what? It will be along plus k cap. So that's another way we can do this. Okay. So similarly, you can do the third part also. Whereas in the second part, you can see that B and B are parallel. In the second part, B and B are both along J cap. Okay. So V cross B will be zero. So charge doesn't matter. So force will be zero. Okay. And likewise, in the third part, you can see that B cross B will be along which direction? Minus I cap. Because V is along the negative y-axis, and so in the third part, V is along 
minus j cap and v is along plus a cap so v cross v the direction kya ho jayega minus of j cross v will be along minus a cap okay. so again if charge is positive the force is along the negative x axis and if charge is positive then the force is along the uh, so if charge is negative then the force is along the positive x axis right people so this is clear now moving on to this question we had next now yeah we had third and six. so third appears to be simple la no? unit vector notation matlab component notation Nikita, I think uh, it's just a matter of understanding what the question is asking. Unit vector notation. Is another way of saying I cap, J cap, A cap notation. Okay. Or that's the same thing as component form. That's all we have to do. Okay. So Vectors are given to me. E is given as five, four, minus six. And B is given as minus two, two, three. Okay. And C is also given as something. Four three two. Now in unit vector notation, we have to find R, where R is e minus b plus. So we'll just do this same operation to all the components. So x component kya ho jayega? E ka x component which is five minus b x component which is minus two plus this so plus four i cap plus a minus b plus c, so that will become four minus two plus j cap, and then again a minus b plus c, so that will be minus six minus three plus two. So the vector r in unit vector notation will become this. So this is eleven i cap plus five j cap. Minus seven. So this should be on. This is the given vector r in unit vector notation, or in terms of i cap, j cap, and k cap, or what we call component form. They are one and the same. Okay. <clears throat> so I hope this question is also clear. Now next, uh, I think we have to complete the sixth question if I am not mistaken. Yeah, so let's complete the sixth question. Oh, B parts. Calculate the angle between R and the positive z-axis. देखो आपने आर वेक्टर निकाल लिया ना तो आप डायरेक्शन को साइन से निकाल तो कॉस बीटा क्या होगा इट बी आर वाई कंपोनेंट डिवाइडेड बाय मॉड आर सो आर वाई कंपोनेंट इज हाउ मच फाइव एंड मॉड आर इज हाउ मच स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ इलेवन स्क्वायर प्लस फाइव स्क्वायर प्लस सेवन स्क्वायर सो दिस विल गिव यू कॉस बीटा और राइट सीखी था बेटा डायरेक्शन को साइन का कौन सा दैट्स हाउ तो कॉस बीटा इज फाइव अपॉन मॉड आर So let's come to next the sixth question. All right. So this one is saying that a vector of magnitude e meters is added to a vector e which lies along the x-axis. So the vector e it is along x-axis. Now 
when let's say the vector we are adding to e is p which is of okay uh, e magnitude 8 meters okay. right saying e plus p is a third vector c now this third vector c is along the y axis and has a magnitude twice of the magnitude of it okay. so we have to find what is the magnitude of it so we can do this by n number of methods and we can do this geometrically so we can understand this way that if e is this vector along the x axis it has some magnitude let us say small a then c is a vector which is along the y axis and it has double the magnitude so c should be a vector like this along the y axis and it has magnitude 2 in perpendicular so where is the vector b now b should be this vector b should be this vector here and b is magnitude is equal to as is so basically the root of b square plus c square should be equal to b and this one is a and this one is y so you can see that you get the root 5 t is equal to three by and according to this it becomes sixteen by root five. That's three. Okay. okay, is this clear, brother? Ask me, is this clear, brother? Exercise four, question number six. Now let us come to uh, question number. We are supposed to do seven, eleven, and twelve. Seven, ten. Seven. Ah, this is an interesting question. So this is about again just a little bit about you know position and displacement that kind of thing in kinematics. So it's saying that you have a ship standing at a position which you are taking as your origin. So this is where the ship was originally standing, and there is a point E which is one twenty kilometers due north. So this point E is at zero comma one twenty. Because I'm taking the y-axis as my north okay, in kilometers, whereas it gets blown off because of some wind to a point B, which is to the east, which is my x-axis at a direct distance of 100 kilometers. So it's at 100 comma zero. So now we have to find the displacement vector from A to from B to A. We have to find. So we have to find this displacement vector from B to A. The displacement vector is this one. This is the displacement vector, or you can just call it B. It's the displacement from B to A. So you can see that that is having a negative x component of. Minus hundred and a positive y component of plus one twenty. That's it. So that is minus hundred i cap plus one twenty. Now you can do whatever you want from it. So you can find out its magnitude, the angle, etc. All these things. Okay, so I think that's all it was to this question. Yeah, question seven was this only. So it's like a two-dimensional kinematics kind of situation. We just understand how 
instead of coordinates, we are using component element. Now let's come to question 10. Next, just trying to finish off in a few minutes. How x is negative with number because we would displacement as a B say A would displacement as a like this. You can see that when you drop the perpendicular, it is having a negative x component, it is having a positive y component. Okay. You are going from the point 100 to the point 0 no, along the x axis. So your displacement is change in x i cap plus change in y beta. That's another way you can do. So you're going, so it is x a minus x b. Because you're going from b to a. It's b to a i cap plus y a minus y b. Now you substitute these coordinates. That's another way to understand. Okay. Uh, now let's come to tenth question. Now, 10th question is again something to do with you know uh, unit vector. So it's saying that the magnitude of the velocity of a particle is given to us as 50 meters per second. And it is going from a point E to a point B, where the coordinates of the point A are 2, comma 1. And the coordinates of the point B are 9, comma 25 on the two-dimensional x y plane. So kya hoga? This ka jo displacement hoga. So, displacement and velocity are collinear okay? because it's going with uniform velocity along a straight line. So, my velocity vector has to be along this. Okay? So, velocity vector is the magnitude of 50 meters per second into some unit vector. Now, this unit vector kya hoga? It is the unit vector joining in. So, n cap is the unit vector. From E. Okay. So N cap is nothing but the displacement E B divided by its magnitude. So what is the displacement E B that you can see in the diagram again? It is from the coordinates you get that the displacement has an x component of how much? It's going from 2 to 9. So it is 7 I cap. And a y component is going from 1 to 25. So plus 24 j cap okay. divided by its own magnitude, which is 7 i cap plus 24 j magnitude. So it is 7 i cap plus 24 j cap divided by square root of 7 square as 49 plus 24 square. So as you know, this will give you 625. 49 plus 576 plus square root. Okay. So that will be this divided by. 625. So that is so n cap is 7 i cap plus 24 j cap by 25. This is a unit vector. So now my velocity vector is the magnitude which is 50 meters per second multiplied by the unit vector which is 7 i cap plus 24 j cap divided by 25. So you can bring this 1 by 25 outside, so that cancels with 50 to give you 2. So the velocity vector, when you multiply the 2 inside, you become 49 cap plus 48 g cap in meters per second. Okay, this is similar to that problem in the worksheet we had done once, where we saw that a point was moving from, a particle was moving from one point to another. So, how to relate the coordinates of those two points with the displacement vector as well as the acceleration, oh, sorry, as well as the velocity vector. Okay, so that's the 10th question, then 11th question. Two vectors. Uh, so, hope this question is clear, the 10th one. Manas, I think you had asked question 10. So this is clear. Okay. Good. Now, 11th question. So it says that 
two vectors which are opposite to each other in direction. So let's say if we have one vector a certain magnitude e and another vector of a certain magnitude but they are opposite to each other. In this case what is happening is that their resultant has a magnitude of something that's given to us in a 17 or something or in a 11. It's 17 units. Okay. Now, next, what I do is I keep the vectors of the same magnitude, but I make them perpendicular to each other. So now, let's say I've kept E the way it was. E may koi change me kya mein. But B ko mein change kar liya. Such that I have now made it perpendicular to it, but of same magnitude. So the vector B, let's say, say I have changed it like this. So I made it some new vector B prime, but its magnitude is the same. And this is magnitude. So this time, what will be magnitude of E plus B? It has become, or E plus B prime in this case, it has become 25. Okay. So here, what is magnitude of E plus B? It is E minus B. Assuming A is greater, that is 7. And here, what is it? It's root of a square plus b square. So that's 25. So equation 1 and equation 2 solve them. That's all. Okay. So here, substitute b as e minus 17. Substitute that b. And square both sides. So you get the answer. So it becomes e square plus b square is equal to 625. So e square plus e minus 17 whole square. Is equal to 35 squares. So just solve this. 2a square plus 34a so minus 34 okay. and then we'll have plus 17 square minus 25 square is equal. You just solve this for e. And then for e. So that's the 11th question. Then 12th question is theoretical. So I'll let you out with it. Yes, Nikita, you have asked for 12 A and F. So I'm explaining. Should a quantity having a magnitude and direction necessarily be a vector? Okay. Uh, my answer to that would be no matter. Because, for example, electric current flows from higher potential to lower potential. But it is not a vector quantity. It's a scalar quantity. So just because it has a direction doesn't mean that it's a vector. The thing is that its definition should include its direction. And more importantly, it should obey the laws of vector algebra. So when you talk about electric current, when you're adding two currents, they add like scalar quantity. Whereas when you talk about forces or when you talk about displacements, they add according to the laws of vector algebra. So accordingly. So that's E part. Now, well, uh, B part. Can two similar vectors of different magnitude yield a zero resultant. Okay, so similar vector means vectors of same unit, but different magnitude. So for example, if I have one vector which is of magnitude 5 newtons and another vector which is of magnitude, let's say 6 newtons, 
can their resultant be zero? The answer is no. Cannot because if you have only two vectors whose resultant is zero, that means definitely one vector is opposite of the other. Okay, which means that magnitude of that one is equal to magnitude. So two vectors of different magnitude, their resultant cannot be zero. However, if we have three vectors of different magnitude, their resultant can be zero. So if I have this condition that E plus B plus C, three vectors is zero, then C is minus of A plus B. So that means magnitude of C is equal to magnitude of A plus B. So all three can be different because you can have a scalene triangle also. No? If B is like this and B is like this, so A plus B would be this one. So C would be opposite of that. So C you can see it could be. Now they can all be different also. It can be a scalene triangle. It can be an isosceles triangle. It can be equilateral triangle. So all three cases are possible. So A not equal to B not equal to C is also possible. Two of them are equal is also possible. All three are equal is also possible. Okay, so is option B clear, Peter? Okay, so that is question number twelve done. So I think we are done with uh, the discussion of the question now. All right. So people, thanks for your patience today with the uh, power cut disruption and then the extra time and all that. But the good thing is that we have managed to achieve the completion of doubts. Okay. So with that, we conclude vectors, people, and uh, Today I will be sending you the PDF uh, of the uh, theory notes for Newton's laws, so you can start going through that. And anything pending in vectors, please complete it. Otherwise, you can start uh, reading the Newton's laws of motion uh, theory notes and all that. So that's it. Okay, guys. Okay. And congratulations, you have finished your first chapter of vector of physics with me. Uh, no, Vidas, Nikita, the module is different. I will be sending you the module. Okay. Oh, but you know, module one hard copy, I'll have to check better because I haven't seen the hard copy myself yet. But I doubt it will have vectors. I mean, I, I doubt it will have Newton's laws of motion. It will probably just have calculus and vectors. Yeah, so module one is probably going to be just that uh, this one, you know, that useful mathematics of physics. Yeah, better leave it for 24, 48 hours, whatever. Best. Let it get sanitized. Don't touch it for a day or two at least, okay? Let it get sanitized. <laughs> 